We are now recording. So uh, it is a great pleasure to have uh, Yuha Pavana here to tell us about um, facets of universal construction. Is that good? Oh. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Can, so, um, thank you. So, it's a pleasure to give a talk. I'm sorry that I couldn't be there in person. Uh, so this is, um, can you hear me? Yes, we're, the audio seems good. Uh, uh, yeah, great, great. Uh, so, um, so let me start with the category of cobordisms. Um, I'll start with the category of n virtual cobordisms between n minus one manifolds. So objects are n minus one manifolds m, and morphisms are cobordisms m of a dimension um, uh, lowercase n. And this category of cobordisms is a rigid symmetric monoidal category. Rigid means that you can bend, you can bend. Um, objects into this u cap u turn morphisms any way you want with isotopy relations. Symmetric means you can permute the objects uh, and morphisms, and monoidal means you can place um, cobordisms in parallel. Um, and so, in the the notion of TQFT, in the sense of ATIA, um, it's a, we can say it's a monoidal functor from this topological category functor F. To some algebraic category, like a category, like the category of modules over a field or a community for K, uh, which is monoidal, so it's multiplicative on objects, takes disjoint union to the tensor product. Um, and closed, in particular, closed manifolds, closed and manifolds take values in the ground field or in K. Uh, and you, you can actually, and so we've seen, there are lots of spectacular examples in dimension three, in dimension four, Wittgenstein to arrive, TQFT, Donaldson, Floor, TQFT, etc. So we can um, here we can we can sort of do a toy toy game. We can go the other way, and this works, and this gives interesting results in low dimensions. We can start with evaluation of closed and virtual manifolds and build uh, minimal state spaces for n minus one dimensional manifolds and the functor f. So how does this work? So let us start with the ground field. It could also be a community frame, and later we'll see whether it can be a summary. And we have an evaluation map L from, from isomorphism, so diffeomorphism or homeomorphism classes of closed n-dimensional manifolds. It could also be n-dimensional kind of manifolds with decorations, objects, subject to the multiplicativity condition so that alpha of the disjoint union is the product of alphas of the two manifolds. Uh, this almost implies the condition that we still impose for non-degeneracy that alpha of the empty and manifold is one. Uh, Diffeomorphic manifolds must give equal evaluations, and that's all we require. And with this is a very weak condition, so you get one, you should just select one number for every, just select one number for every um, diffeomorphism class of connected closed and manifolds. And from this, you get this evaluation alpha. So it's, there are lots of examples. So to such connected manifolds M, you choose assign any any alpha of M. Um, if you want for the structure to be very nice um, under the uh, orientation reversal, you can add the condition that you have an involution phi on your field or in case such that uh, phi respects orientation reversal. But we actually, most of the time, we're going to ignore this in situation. We are in very low dimensions. It will not matter. Um, and now, so given the self, starting with an, any closed oriented n minus 1 manifold, we first build a very large <coughs> free modular vector space, um, free of n. And it has a basis of symbols of n manifolds m whose boundary is n. So you, n is fixed. And it's fixed here. And M is variable, but the boundary of M is N. Um, so we take this. So take this very large um, uh, vector space or modules uh, with a basis of all such M for a fixed N. And we can introduce a bilinear form on this free module um, by taking two generators, symbols of M1, symbols of M2, with the same boundary N, and glue them together into closed N manifold. So reflect, say, M1. Like M1 to M minus M1, glue to M2 along N, you get a closed N manifold, apply alpha to get a number, an element of the ground ring. And uh, so with this evaluation, and extend by linearity, extend by linearity to linear combinations 
of basis elements on 3n. And in this way, on this very large free module, you get a um, bilinear form. So you can mod out by the kernel the bilinear form. What does it mean to be in the kernel? It means that if you take a linear combination of this manifold semi with boundary n with coefficients in k, it's equal to zero, so it belongs to the kernel. If and only if, for any way to close it up using a manifold m at the top, evaluate, evaluate, multiply by alpha i, you should get zero. So if this is true for any m, for any way to cap it off and evaluate, you say that this combination is in the kernel, then this combination is in the kernel of the body near form, and you take this quotient. And uh, if you choose, if you choose your evaluation randomly, then uh, chances are kernel will be zero, so it will be not very interesting. You'll just have a very large space free n. So what we are interested in are special degenerate alphas such that uh, there are lots of relations, or lots of skin relations. In particular, we want the state space to be of finite rank or finite dimensional over, over the ground field. Um, uh, how much time do I have? Is it 50 minutes or an hour? An hour. An hour. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, so please, please, sign, please ask questions anytime during the talk. Uh, so in, in the setup, if you have a state space for a null, so alpha of a null is a state space, so all the manifolds that bounded modulus scale relations, you have an inclusion from the tensor product state space for a null times state space for n1 into state space for a null union n1. You can just take um, m null which bounds n null, m1 bounds n1, and take their disjoint union m null m1, and that bounds m null one And that induces a map. This is this map. Um, when the ground ring is a field, this map is injective. But it's usually usually not surjective, and the reason is that we might not have skein relations that if you take n, take minus n, and take this um, take this canonical cobordism, you sort of U turn. Um, take the, usually we might not have relations that would allow us to decompose this cobordism as a sum of m i m i bounding n, m i bounding bounding minus n uh, times some coefficient. Sorry, might not have this available, and this means that this space, this um, state space will be strictly larger than the tensor product of spaces because not everything with boundary n union minus n will decompose into such sums. Another way to say that there is no, no neck cutting formula, no surgery formula. So usually it's only <coughs> inclusion and you can say that alpha is not um, monoidal and Andy who is I uh, think watching, he taught me that the right term is lax monoidal. So it's weakly monoidal. You have, you have these maps, um, but they are not they are not surjective, not, not isomorphisms. Um, and but but if such neck cutting exists for all n minus one manifolds, and then it's actually multiplicative, and we get an isomorphism um, for the disjoint union, and then it's a TQFT essentially TQFT in a TS sense. Um, and so, so this construction, this we call this universal construction. So starting with any variation function, we can build this, this state spaces. Uh, this goes back to Blanche, Haberger, Masbaum, and Vagel, 1995 paper, when they study Wittgenstein drive, um, three-dimensional TQFT from this viewpoint. Uh, then in link homology, so for us, um, this came from link homology because in link homology, what you do, what you see a lot is, let me actually add. Let me actually insert the slide so I can draw. In, uh, in, so in, in link homology, to get a module link, we usually break it into um, into graphs and get homology for graphs first. Homology for graphs, they, they're easier um, to construct. And, and then, then we build complexes out of homologies of graphs. Um, and um, this complexes give us homology of the link, so it's of course artificial, um, but it works, at least in some cases. Um, and then to build homology of graphs, we, we do this roundabout procedure. We first we look at forms that are cobordisms between graphs, 
and then for a form so this is an example of a form you have three disks glue it at an at a circle for this form you so the most efficient way right now or the most commentable way of getting an variation is to assign to a form f assign some variant alpha f and given this invariance we can now do universal construction so we can take a cross cut we can cut form by a plane and then you'll see a graph in the cross section and, and now the state space of the graph is obtained just as we discussed you look at all the forms that bound the graph f take the symbols modulo universal construction uh, for which you need the variation and you build homology of graphs from homology of graphs you then pass to homology of links everything is very commentarial requires symmetry breaking because you need a planar projection um, passing to these graphs <coughs> so it's very commentarial and there are lots of symmetry breaking so of course it would be nice to have other ways to understand this um, and uh, uh, but but in forms defining this variation is very tricky it relates to cohomology of uh, Grassmannians and flag varieties and then acquires more beyond this um, and that's uh, the I refer you to the <coughs> work on Robert and Wagner on formulations for how to do this for forms for GLN um, um, and that and before this the construction was known only for SL2 when it's you can ignore forms you can just work with surfaces and SL3 when you don't see singular vertices um, but sort of we came to even use of construction from from forms because doing link homology combinatorially um, in many examples requires this form variation um, due to Robert and Wagner um, and then you can also find this in the papers of Mike Friedman um, um, with um, Kitaev, Nayak, um, Walker, Slingel and Wang um, his work with Calgary and Walker um, then they do this universal construction but in the case when the evaluation is um, um, kind of very um, when the variation is um, has no relation, so to speak, your 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 ring K is just whatever manifold generate, and they have some positivity results in dimension difficult positivity result for the pairing in dimension three and examples in dimension four where pairing is not positive, has no vectors, and and then and then recently we've um, we've played with examples in low dimensions and we get interesting interesting results on this so let me tell you some of those um, structures so let me first um, go back to the universal construction um, and just point out from reality why is it a topological theory because so we build starting from evaluation for closed and manifolds we build state spaces for n minus one manifolds and now if you have a cobordism m from n null to n1 this cobordism induces a map between state spaces state space of n null so whatever is attached to n all modular relations to whatever is attached to n one modular relations it's the obvious map so you take um, um, a generator m null attached to n null a generator for a generator for one generator for the space and compose with m, with m. you get cobordism m null m uh, from nothing into into n one and this is your map on state spaces m null goes to its composition m null concatenation m null and n you can check what it's well defined on the state spaces uh, and this maps um, compose as they should uh, so that we get a functor from the category of n cobordisms and dimensional cobordisms to the category of modules of vector spaces over k and again it's monoidal in a weak sense we only have inclusions uh, for the disjoint union um, and so, so, so to show you an example um, of what we see, let me talk about a joint work with Robert Logbitz from last year, where we look at the two-dimensional case with one-dimensional defects. And the motivation, motivation for this comes from a joint functors. If you have two categories, A and B, and you have a joint functors, F and G, back and forth, uh, this is, these are the adjointness relations, out of the adjointness relations, there is a standard way to get natural transformations. Natural transformation from identity of category A to FG in this order, and from um, composition GF in this order to identity um, of category B. And the interesting feature of this um, description of a joint pair of functors is that 
we can draw we can draw functors by putting dots on the line this is functor f from category a to category b this is functor g from category b to category a this is our composition and this picture is a picture of an angle transformation from one functor from identity functor there's nothing here to fg and the regions of this picture are labeled by um, categories a and b um, and functors are labeled well by dots and then natural transformations are labeled by diagrams in the plane so these are the pictures for these two diagrams and the motivation for this particular using this particular picture is that i joined these relations um, on these transformations are written as follows they are that this uh, this map this transformation is equal to the identity transformation on g and this transformation this transformation is equal to the identity transformation on f so here because they are joined for f we choose oriented arrows up for g uh, arrows oriented um well, the lines oriented down and it's sort of a b so it's checkerboard colored uh, so these are isolated relations but these are not all the isolated relations you can find because th th there are two more you can you can reverse b and a put f here and reverse the orientation and then you don't see this relation here so what you do you add the second adjointed condition you have the condition that are joint on the other side and that involves it involves choosing two more such transformations but everything is reversed b to a orientations f to g uh, so you and you have two more relations written here and now you have full isotopy you have all four isotopy relations uh, whenever you have this by joint pair of functors now how where, where do you get by joint pairs so in topological theories in tqfts by joint pairs they come from extended tqfts uh, extended tqft uh, uh, is a two functor from the two category of cobordisms with corners in dimension n so in that um, two category objects are n closed n minus one n minus two manifolds k one morphisms are n minus one cobordisms n between n minus two manifolds and two morphisms are n dimensional cobordisms with corners between one morphisms um, and whenever we have an um, now we have an extended QFT. We have a we have a, a two functor into some algebraic two category, like the category of maybe um, category of bimodules and bimodule homomorphisms, or maybe complexes of bimodules and complexes of bimodule homomorphisms, homomorphism complexes. And um, so to n minus two manifold, we assign a category to a cobordism, we assign a functor between categories for its boundaries, and to n n cobordism, we assign a natural transformation between these functors um, and the interesting feature of these functors is that any any n minus one cobordism with boundary gives you a pair of bijoint functors so any n minus one cobordism can be reflected any cobordism can be reflected to go the other way from n to n star and then uh, if you look at the n cobordisms between these and minus one cobordisms, you'll actually find these four. Uh, you'll find the four natural transformations and the relations on them. So, for instance, to build a map from identity to n composed with n star in this way, well, you just take n times the interval and just uh, take n times the interval and then sort of stretch it, move it like this. So, move, uh, let me show it here, you take n times the interval and then, and then just stretch it. So it's n n star, and um, and in this way you can get all four, um, all four n cobordisms, and uh, you have isotopies between corresponding compositions, so you get a bijoint pair out of this. You can also say that just inside this two category, if you think of these as functors, then this functor is automatically bijoint, bijoint to its reflection, and and that's the way to get um, pairs of bijoint functors from any TQFT. No, so, so at first, when people studied this, they ignored the structure because in the important examples in dimension three, like witness taking drive to QFT, um, the categories are semi-simple and the functors are linear. So whenever we have a semi-simple category and linear functor, then it automatically has a bijoint. So it doesn't give you uh, much new information. 
but if you pass from not semi-simple case to not semi-simple case, you get an interesting structure. So namely, in the situation for two bijoint functors uh, from A to B and back, you can do the following. You can get lots and lots of elements in the center of A and center of B, in the center of category A and in the center of category B. Um, so namely, uh, well, if you go if you go back to this to this lines and in all of those lines, you can you can you can you can compose them to build circles in the plane, and the circles can be nested. And this nesting gives you the following. So every time you let's say you already apply some nesting to build um, an element in the center of A. Now you can so this is category A here. Now you can you can draw a circle oriented in this case clockwise, and now this now the outer category is B. But now this gives you an element of B. So in this way, you get a map from the center of A to the center of B. Um, and of course, the so center of A, oh, let me point out, the center of A is a commutative algebra. Oh, it says here, it's commutative algebra. Um, and you get a map from the center of A, just, just wrap, wrap, uh, wrap stuff around to the center of B. But this map is not, it's most of the time, it's not an algebra map. So if you have two blobs, wrapping circle around them, it's not the same as wrapping a circle around separately around each blob. So it's just a map of, of factor spaces over K. Um, and vice versa, going back, given the central element of B, shown as this blob here, Z prime, you can wrap a circle the other way around, um, the opposite orientation now, because it's B. Now the outer category, outer region is labeled by A, and you get the K linear map from Z of B to Z of A. So you have two commutative algebras, let's say, say over a field, and you have two maps, but the maps are only k-linear, so they are not algebra maps most of the time. So you get this, you get the structure. There are lots of such examples. Just pick any two commutative algebras, any two linear maps, and from from such a thing, you can sort of you can you can rebuild, you can build your adjoint pair of functors. So and um, and. And in particular, a configuration like this gives you an element to the center of A. And to multiply two such elements, you put them next to each other. And you can wrap things around to get an element to the center of B. Um, and so, so this by joint pair carries lots of data because it's not multiplicative in any sense. So, and, and this is what Robert and I did um, in our paper. So we, we just looked at a way to build, to rebuild, uh, um, to rebuild a bijoint pair of functors f and g from this data, from this data, um, and so to, to make this further in the spirit of the universal construction, we actually assume not, we sort of we hide we hide this this algebras z of a, and we can only see them through evaluations. So what we want is to now evaluate given the diagram of circles where the outer part is either b or a, we want to assign to it its evaluation. Uh, but actually variation on K. So we take, uh, we choose a trace, just any linear maps, hopefully not degenerate, into K, and such a trace map for diagrams with the outer. So we choose a trace map for Z, choose a trace map for B. Um, and when you look in terms of the diagrams of nested circles, what you have is, so to a diagram of nested circles, you assign a number. So you get lots of numbers. Uh, this nested circle diagrams they correspond to they correspond to trees um, trees. Um, so you start um, you start on the outer circle. Uh, this this is A. So you put label A here. Uh, now you look what the circles that are immediately inside these two circles. So this circle we denote by a dot here, and this is edge. Um, and this circle we denote by a dot here, and we have an edge saying that it's immediately inside our first circle, and so on. So now it has these two circles, so we inductively, so this circle corresponds to this dot here, three circles it contains corresponds to these three nodes, and in, in this way we get a, we get a bijection between isotopic class, isotopy classes of um, nested circles on the plane, and well, trees, but you can also you can have several trees. So if you have several connected components, you have a tree for every component. So you really have a um, correspondence between such diagrams and forests. And now to build the variation, you need two maps: forests with outer label A into K, and forests with outer label B with two K. And so to simplify the bookkeeping, 
we in our paper we did the case when the two categories are the same uh, and the functor f is equal to the functor g so you really just have a category a and the functor f as and the functor which is bijoint if it's bijoint it's then you just need two maps these two maps for bijointness and without orientation you don't need to orient now you only have two relations so so f is self a joint functor and then we don't need to worry about this checkerboard colorings by a and b everything is called by a all the regions called by a so you have a map alpha evaluation map from forest to k so you should think of it like this so we secretly we have a center of a category every forest gives us an element of the center and we have a trace function on the center into k so we just kind of we only know the trace function we don't yet know the center that's the situation and from this function from forests um, into k we can build we can build a category and a pair of uh, and, and self-adjoint function and the way you do it is it's a version of the universal construction so you need to cut you need to cut your diagram in in two in two pieces in this example pieces are not fully symmetric so you cut your diagram into by this red circle into the inner part and outer part um, so the pairing is between two different spaces um, the uh, inside space un is a span of diagrams you fix the number of endpoints to n and you put arcs and arcs and any number of circles they could be nested any way you want and that's uh, and take the span of these diagrams take a space with the basis of these diagrams that's an infinite dimensional space and but you also need to take the space of outer diagrams so diagrams in an annulus uh, so you have n arcs and some number of circles circle can also fully envelop fully envelop the red circle so that's a bigger in some sense informally speaking that's a bigger space and you have a bilinear pairing between these two spaces just take a diagram here take a diagram there insert one into the other you get now we can ignore the remove the red circle you have a collection of black circles so evaluate it using our evaluation function alpha evaluation function alpha um, um, and this way we get a bilinear pairing between two different spaces, un and vn. And we can pass to the quotient space, take the inner space, mod out by the kernel of this bilinear form. Um, and this is our state space, space, the space of two endpoints on the circle. We can also just cut the circle here and draw it like this, like a strip. Um, and so we work in the state spaces a of n where two n is a number of endpoints and out of the state spaces you can build a monoidal category where homes from k to m just close up and take this state space so homes from k to m are sort of all such again it's all such diagrams and the linear combinations but module of the universal relations whatever they are they all come from a variation alpha alpha from alpha takes any collection of circles to k or any tree, any tree. Okay. Um, and so, so in this way, we get a monoidal category. Um, alpha, it's not symmetric because, well, we cannot permute things. Uh, the state space of no points, you know, is spanned by this nested diagrams of circles. No, no arcs, no endpoints on the boundary, no arc. And um, then you can check that this state space is finite dimensional if and only if for any n any state space let me scroll back any state space for two endpoints is finite dimensional because if you know that in every region you can have at most finite dimensional story by space that means that the whole setup is finite dimensional because when you have you have n plus one regions and there are finitely many pairings so then if you know that a null is finite dimensional this module of the general construction then you know that the n is finite dimensional so what does that mean for an all to be finite dimensional well you have infinitely many diagrams but you have a pairing so you can put here you can put here collections of circles on the outside so put any collection take this variation if there are lots of relations if there are lots of relations on these variations if um then you might end up with finite dimensional a null um and and then the um, and, and, and then we get finite dimensionality of all state spaces. 
And then, so the same null, it's a, it's, a, it's a commutative algebra because you can take two such diagrams and put them next to each other and envelop by a single red circle. You also have a, uh, this uh, map omega where you put a circle, you can take any diagram um, of circles and put another circle around it. Um, and that's a linear map, not an algebra map. Um, and, and you have a trace map alpha from n to k. Um, and th then we get um, then this algebra in all with these properties and this linear map. Um, it's a sort of it's sort of like a Fabinus algebra, but in some very weak sense. It's Fabinus algebra in the following weak sense that for any for any combination of diagrams you start with, for any a and a null, you can choose um, you can choose diagrams b1, b2, bn, and this iterate circles such that uh, evaluation is not zero. So it's sort of like a Frobenius algebra, but in a very weak sense. And it comes with a linear map uh, to itself from an endomorphism of vector space. Um, and in, in this way, I mean, you can also start with such an A and omega and, and do this evaluation. And the end result is going to be potentially smaller algebra because you need to kill the kernel of this bilinear form uh, but it's so so what we get in our paper is sort of this correspondence when uh, we can build a pair of bijoint functors and again bijoint functors are essential for tqfts we get them from any uh, from any such uh, trace map on trees on trees of a particular kind or on collections of nested circles in the plane so for bijoint you need to have two evaluation maps depending on which color is carried by the outside region uh, category a or category b and so this is sort of one example of inertial construction it's in low dimension it's in dimension two and it's even on the plane so we don't have any genus but we have defects we have defects with the nested circles so it's 2d with in genus zero we found the dimensional defects and maybe let me pause for questions Okay, so um, let me um, tell you about another example. Uh, and in fact, Radmila will will tell you about two-dimensional case without defects based on our joint paper. Uh, so that's yet another example. But let me tell you this another amusing story. It's a joint work with me, Song Kim. It's uh, in the archive, a couple of months old. So we now we're gonna go even lower. We're gonna go to dimension one from dimension two. We're gonna go to dimension one. But in dimension one, there are very few, there are very few manifolds, right? Any connected manifold is a circle, any kappa connected manifold is a circle. So let us even allow boundary points so we can have circles and intervals. But that's still just two um, diffeomorphism classes of manifolds. So let us allow defects. The defects are these dots on one manifold, the zero dimensional defects. And each defect carries a label 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 from a finite set of defects sigma uh, so then any connected manifold is either this or this so interval of defects and now we can think of this manifold as words in letters in words and letters sigma so this um, this excuse me um, this so this manifold corresponds to a word a1 a2 a n while this manifold correspond to cyclic word because it's word up to cyclic rot up to rotation. Um, so, so we have a supply, we have a large supply of our manifolds with defects to use variation functions. We're also going to change uh, from ground field or ring R to a semi ring um, B. In, this, in semi ring, you only have additional multiplication, you don't have minus. And we take the smallest possible ring, which is not a ring, and that's the Boolean ring. so it has 0, 1, and 1 plus 1 is 1, so it's not a field. Um, so there is no subtraction. And this makes things somehow difficult, because without a vector space in the background, it's much harder to compute things. So. Now, we can do the universal construction on this in this story, and when we do the universal construction, 
Um, so we, because we don't have subtraction, we don't have vector spaces, we need to be more careful in defining equivalence. So if we do universal construction, we should work with semi-modules over semi-ring B, so, no, so B acts or semi-acts. So you can multiply a vector by zero to get zero vector. You can multiply a vector by one to get itself. And because one plus one is one, a vector from a vector is itself. So these are semi-modules over B. Um, and because we don't really have a kernel of a bilinear form, in a strong sense, we have to, this is set theoretical, so you have to, all the time, you have to work with equivalence relations. So you would say, you would do universal construction, so in the situation you would have a zero manifold N, a one manifold M with defects, and you would say that one sum is equal to another sum. Uh, now all these coefficients are zero, one, so you can just remove the terms which are zero, once you can remove, so just one sum is equal to another sum. If no matter how you cap it off and evaluate, you get the same number, either both zero or both ones. And then, and so this is the state space. This is how you take quotients in the set theoretical sense, quotients for semi-modules. And there's no cancellation. So if one sum is equal to the another sum, you cannot cancel um, one from both sides. And again, so we have this um, set of labels, labels for defects. We use category C sigma. In this category, objects are zero manifolds that are oriented, so we just record them by sequences of signs, plus and minus orientations. This is an example of a morphism for, from plus minus plus to plus minus minus plus plus. So this morphism, it's a, it's a one manifold. And to have more interesting examples, we allow manifolds to end in the middle, so we allow inner sort of inner boundary points these are outer boundary points these are inner boundary points so we can have circles fully inside we can have intervals fully inside we can also have intervals with one point on the kind of honest boundary and one point in the sort of inside boundary and when you compose for instance when you compose the arcs you can get a circle you can get a floating circle and we have defects so we have a word for every floating interval and a circle of word for every circle. So composition as usual. Um, and, and now we need a variation function. Um, if you have a floating interval with this word a1, a2, a n, which you can write as just word omega, just say word omega, we have a variation. And now we have a circle of word b1, b2, bm, we have a variation. So evaluation so takes uh, sigma star is a set of words in sigma. Evaluation function takes uh, sends us to ground semi ring B, and circle evaluation sends circular words to B zero one. And this when B has only two numbers zero and one, so such a function describing such functions the same as to describe the all the elements that are mapped to one by alpha alpha i for intervals the interval map and alpha circle for circle map so such functions are determined by what people call a language a language is just a subset of words subset of a set of words and by a circular language a subset of circular words adaptations so our evaluation function is a language and a circular language so just a subset of words and and now we can we can do the universal construction so in in this category we first we allow a boolean combination so we just allow sums of diagrams a diagram plus itself is just a diagram plus. Um, and then every time we see a floating interval we read the word and evaluate to zero one if you get zero then the whole thing whole diagram is zero if you get one just remove that component um, and then a circle evaluates using alpha circle to zero one so we sort of reduce to linear combinations of um, diagrams without floating, without floating circles. And, um, but again, we have to allow B linear combinations. So this, so here maybe I can skip some slides for lack of time, uh, but you can take the sum, so you can compose. This is X, sum of two terms. This is Y, you compose Y next by concatenation and you can simplify. So here in the composition, we see a floating interval we look at evaluation of the central the word is baa so baa evaluation of the central zero one so this 
goes into the um, composition of into the computing the composition of maps and in this way we can go from the category of decorated cobordisms first to the category where we can evaluate floating components and allow some of the combinations and then you also add this universal relations so you say that one let me let me just see have to say as we already discussed one sum of diagrams is equal to another sum of diagrams if no matter how you close them up in the eight you get the same number so either both terms are equal to zero or both terms are equal to one for any g and this is our category and in this category of course you have associated state spaces for any sequence of signs um, you look at all the diagrams that bound the signs take the combinations module universal relations and so we get this rigid symmetric model category that is also encoded by this set of state spaces and maps between them and this category is, is, is rigid sort of it's very similar to the categories we already discussed but it's not linear so let me let me just skip again some kind of de details on semi-modules Again, you cannot subtract, you can only add, but also any element plus itself is A. So you can relate the semi-modules to partially ordered sets and to what people call semi-lattices and lattices. So this sum is like the supremum of A and B. And, and then sort of when you work with this creature, with semi-modules, again, they very inconvenient to work with because it's a theoretical story. So the best um, we could do was to embed generators as into embed it into a free semi-module. You take generators of a semi-module and you pick, um, send them to elements of the free semi-module. So send x1 to 110, x2 to 101, x3 to 011. Then, then it gives you some way to control the semi-module. For instance, then x1 plus x2, 1 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 0 is 1, so x1 plus x2 is equal to this x4, for example. So you kind of, for us, the, the best way to understand the semi modules is to put them inside three semi modules, and you can always do this. And then, what is our evaluation for, what is our state space for a single point with sign plus or minus? For sign minus, we should look at all the half intervals, the half floating. This is floating point. We put some word omega here and um, take their combinations. And this a minus is paired to a plus. A plus is same story, but orientation is up. So you pair them up like this. So you take a word omega, take word omega prime, do this composition, you get an interval and evaluate it to zero one. Um, and mod out by the kernel, mod out by this, by the uniform. So you get you get a semi module, a minus. In the semi module, one sum of words is equal to another sum of words. Is if for any word omega prime, you do the variations, you get the same number each time zero one. And then a minus is a B semi module with an action of sigma star because you can given a word you can add a to it, an element of sigma, as a defect. And then so let me let me again check my time. Check my time. Um, so the, the point is that so when people study languages, so languages in this naive sense, just subsets of words, there is a kind of notion of the minimal, kind of the simplest possible languages that are called regular languages. Um, and regular languages, it's a language that can be given by a regular expression. And it's also a language that can be given by a finite state automaton. So let me just give you an example of a finite state automaton. It's this automaton. It has states X, Y, Z. For some reason, this state is called y plus z. Just ignore this label for now. It has four states. So this is the starting state. It has an arrow in. So let's say we have the word. Let's pick a word. A, B, A, A, B, A. So we, um, we start here. The first letter is A. So we follow the edge out of every uh, state. We have edges labeled A, B, etc. Uh, labeled by, by letters. So we go here first. First is A. So we read A. Okay, we go back to X. Now we read B, so we go to next one, to Y. Now we read A. Uh, A is, goes us here to Z, then A again. A again takes us here, back to X. So we are here at X. Now B takes us to Y, 
you hear and now a takes us to z and you see so these states they have double circles around them and this means that they are good states they're accepting states so it means we accept the word so this word is in the language shell and the so so now words start at the initial state read the word travel travel see places and if you end up in a good state the word is in the language if you're in a bad state the word is not in the language uh, and this automaton this particular automaton um, determines the language let me scroll up to see the definition of the language it's the language which consists of all words such that the second letter to last is b in a regular expression you would write this word as anything a plus b star any number of times followed by b followed by anything a plus b so this language is the language of all words such that the second to last letter is b so if you scroll back here uh, you see that the second to last letter is b and this letter is in the language and this is what final state automata are states transition functions one transition function for every letter uh, initial state and accepting states and we say that the language is regular if and only if it's accepted by some final state automata and, and this is a popular topic in basic computer science in, in I think in, in the theory of languages the, the first thing we learn is this final state automata uh, now what's the how what's the relation to a minus because we start with a we start with a language in a circular language but a minus does not know anything about circular language because you need at least two um, and points when you cut a circle um, into into pieces. So a minus only knows the language for the intervals. And so let me let me scroll through this definition. Uh, so there's an it's an easy to it's easy to show that interval language is regular if and only if the state space a minus is is a finite semi module over B, because the semi ring B is finite. Finite semi module is the same as finitely generated semi module. Uh, uh, so, what's the relation between a minus and uh, uh, and automaton for the language L? Let me let me scroll through let me scroll through this example. So so the relation is the following. So you have we have a semi module a minus. So it's linear combinations of um, half intervals with words in them so again a uh, a minus a minus it's a linear combination of pictures like this with some words omega and a acts by adding by adding dots on top so inside a minus we can just take the set of pure states uh, namely just only take words do not take the linear combinations so start with the start with the okay. um, empty word then keep adding more and more words keep adding a's b's etc so take all these words you get a subset of a minus on this on this um on the subset you have an action of by by dots because you can just take your word and add another letter to it so it's close under the action it has initial state and it has a trace map the trace map is just take take your word omega and evaluate it just close it up by an interval with no nothing on it so you get floating interval with omega evaluate using alpha so this is the trace map so you say that the state q is is accepting if the trace map on it is one and if the trace map is zero it's not accepting uh, in this way if out of a minus you recover the a uh, minimal deterministic automaton this automaton for the language for the language l um, um, you can also recover something called non-deterministic automata by taking a um, surjection onto a minus from a free semi-module. Um, and again, a minus is finite B module if and only if the language is regular. Yeah, this was an example for for non-deterministic automata coming from surjections from a free semi module onto a minus where you have uh, you might have more than one arrow labeled by a letter for out of a given state so you can you can make choices and if there is a path which leads you which ends in a good state um, then you accept the word so it's not missing because there are many paths for a given word and if at least one of them is accepting the word is in the language 
uh, and you can sort of you can see this both types of automata in from you can pull it out of a minus with an action of sigma on it and this is for a single point for just a single boundary point when you have uh, when you have more endpoints like a plus minus will now have two types of elements these have intervals with words and an arc with a word omega um, and then you can you get more data uh, let me um, let, let me just get to the um, interesting part yeah well, I mean so we don't have much time for this but um, there is um, so some some semi modules are better than the others and these are so-called projective semi modules that means they're sort of they're rechecks of free semi modules you know, semi module that maps into the free semi module bn and there's a map back such as the composition is the identity so they are rechecks of bn they're not direct summons of bn um, and um, they have many equivalent descriptions but for us the interesting story is that when for such projective semi modules we can do, let me scroll this down to, we can do decomposition of the identity for such projective semi modules. We can take, we can, if a minus, so if, um, if the state a minus is projective semi module, then you can, without knowing a circle language, you can, um, for this projective semi modules, you can sort of write, come up with a sort of a basis on a dual basis, I and bi in a plus a minus. And this allows you to decompose an arc into a linear combination. Arc, uh, ignore size here. You can decompose an arc into some of AIs, BIs here. And this um, allows you to define a circular language. Define a circular language by saying circle with word omega. So insert this formula in place of an arc. Insert this formula. Put in AIs, BIs with half intervals of truncate. So instead of an arc, put in AIs, BIs, so, and the value. And you get a circular language um, in this way, canonically assigned to a language interval from an interval language with additional property that A minus is a projective semi-module. Um, and then you actually have neck cutting. You have sort of your zero manifold, you have a dual manifold. This is plus sign, this is dual manifold minus sign. You have this you have the, this arc, and you're able to cut it, cut it into a sum of pieces with boundary separate for plus and minus. And from this, you can derive that the state space of union of sequences, union of manifolds, is the tensor product of uh, state spaces. Um, and it's especially nice tensor product because these are projective semi modules. Um, and then the nice result that we obtained in the paper observation is that so if you have a regular language and um, assume that A minus is a projective semi module, it's the same as being a distributive lattice, then there's a canonical, canonical circular language defined using this closure, close up with word omega. And then we get a TQFT in the sense of idea, but it's 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 one dimensional. It's for defects. It's for manifolds with defects, and it's boolean valued. Um, and um, um, so this is a sort of connection to ideas original um, and physicists original ideas, but it, it, things are kind of modified. We are in very low dimensions, dimension one, but we have defects. Uh, we are over semi-ring and we see connection to languages to computer science etc so this was a summary of the second half of the talk so what we do given such functions we can build a category we can reconstruct this category c alpha using the universal construction we can rethink the notion of deterministic and non-deterministic automata in the from the viewpoint of i minus and i think this is i think this is kind of well go, goes back to the foundations of the automata theory but maybe they don't use this exactly this language but the novel thing is that we now have a whole category we have a whole rigid category these semi-linear categories so we don't have just a single state space um, related to an automata and these categories are completely unexplored 
sometimes they give rise to TQFTs when A minus is projective and you can do decomposition of the identity. Uh, but it is just sort of an interesting example. Category that also knows kind of you can see automata when you look at just the uh, state space of a single point. And, and so these are so some examples of how we see defects. Um, we see them in dimension one, zero dimensional defects labeled over Boolean ring. We get this um, uh, rigid tensor closure of regular language. You can do the linear case um, and do something similar, get on commutative power series and the category out of this. So in dimension two, 1D defects in the planar case, we get this kind of self-adjoint functors or by adjoint functors uh, from this data of a of the function on trees, of evaluation of trees. Um, and so Radmil will talk about um, um, our work where we kind of generalize the link category of representations of the symmetric group at a generic parameter to the small general situations using using evaluation functions in two dimensions. And, and this is completely unexplored. Uh, nobody knows, I mean, it's an interesting question how to get something deep in dimension three or dimension four. It's completely explored, and, and it's sort of canonically, canonically again, not everybody likes this term. I also, I mean, don't want to split math into whatever applied and pure, but in some sense, what we're doing here, uh, it's kind of, it's not surprising that we see this relations to applications to applied mathematics or other sciences, because when we have a civilization, it's like we have an information about closed objects, objects that we observe say, from a distance. And now we're building state spaces for cross sections. So we sort of we're building models for what happens inside. Cross sections give us vector spaces. Cobordians give us maps. So we're kind of building a model for the machine that computes this evaluation. Uh, so while in kind of computer science we go from data to a model, here we do something similar. We go from evaluation function to state spaces for n minus one manifolds together with interactions with them given by cobordism. So it's kind of it's sort of a toy model for what people do in more applied science. So, so I think let me stop here. Thank you. We were unmuted. Let's clap again. Uh, thank you very much. Um, are there oh, thank you. Or from people remotely, just speak up and mute yourself and say something. You know, Go ahead. Uh, speak, speak clearly, Suzanne. Okay. Uh, I think I have a question. So, in your talk, you mentioned several times of maps which is stable here but not algebraic. Time to not If you can. Yes. Oh no no, it's sort of it's it's linear map, but it's it doesn't respect the multiplication, so it's not a homomorphism. So it's not a homomorphism from the algebra to itself, or from an algebra to another. So it's just linear. So you know, if you if you have an algebra over a field, right? Homomorphisms are scarce. In some sense, there are not many homomorphisms. There are tons of linear maps from this algebra to another algebra. So when you put the circle around the configuration, you're building a map from which is not a homomorphism. So if you take two, if you take two elements z1, z2, they correspond to different blobs. If you put a circle around them, it's not the same element as if you put separately put a circle around each and put the circles next together. So it just it's only linear. It's not a homomorphism in this sense. So so it's. Um, Everything is sort of algebraic in some sense, but it's just not a homomorphism. So any such data will give us a pair of adjoint functors and by adjoint functors. And we see them a lot in topological quantum field theories. So we see by adjoint functors all the time in topological quantum field theories and um, often in algebra as well. But they sort of correspond to this pairs of, to this evaluations of nested circles in the plane. 
No, I, I have a question. Oh. Uh, so, uh, so usually universal construction is, uh, yeah, like so you, you said, it was one. I mentioned zero and one. Yeah, is there a universal construction for some? Is there a universal construction for like uh, starting with something in four dimension two, or sorry, starting with something for going down one further four dimension? Uh, I don't know if I have a precise question. Yes, so you have a question about per dimension. I mean, you can do things in different dimensions, <clears throat> but so I think it's mostly unexplored. Um, but but also, I mean, you have to remember that to build to build in homology, we have to do in, we do universal construction on forms, but later we still need to take complexes. So in that example, universal construction relies on a sophisticated evaluation function on forms. Plus, that's not the end of the story because you need to after you build the state space for a cross section for a planar graph, you still need to arrange them into a complex of vector spaces. So this universal construction completely ignores homological algebra for now. So you have to do homological algebra later if you want to get four dimensional variance, if you want to get link homology and invariance of link abortisms. So it's really uh, like in the way we're discussing, it's really best for low dimensions. If you want to do something, for instance, in dimension four, restricted to R4, we still need to do additional steps. We still need to pass two complexes at the end. So you can, for instance, you can also ask if you can pass the complexes early on within the universal construction and so on. So these are all good questions. But so far, it feels like it's the best in very low dimensions. Any other questions? I have another question. Please. Uh, so, you define a category C and I was wondering, like, how can you enumerate all the more of that category? Of the more, okay, so, I mean, okay, maybe I can just briefly switch to back to transparencies, to slides. Should I do? Yeah. Okay, okay, just give me a minute. Um, let me see. So let, me, let me shift to slides. Oh, can you see? No? Or oh, maybe, maybe not. Yeah. So let me let me scroll. So you have a question about universal construction for um, for the example with automata or example with by joint functors. Sorry. Yes. So yeah. Well, yeah. So yeah, I couldn't hear. Um, I asking about category for the by joint functors or for automata. Yeah, so, so how I cannot hear, sorry. sorry. He's asking about this uh, category here, right? Yeah. yeah. And and how do you uh, enumerate all of this category? How do I, how, how to enumerate? Sorry, sorry. How, how do you enumerate all of How to, homo, so, homomorph, sorry. Right. How to enumerate all the morphisms of this category? Uh, but in this particular category, or so this is for this is in one this is in one dimension, right? With defects, well, it depends. I mean, you it depends on your language. So you want to um, again, you, you you don't have a so it's actually a um, a, a difficult. I think it's a non-trivial question. So you uh, the home spaces are semi-modules. Um, so again, they don't have a basis, and so so far, I mean, I think the most efficient way was to embed them into some free semi module. But then you need a free semi module for each uh, home space. To um, each, you need a separate embedding for each home space. So it's a it's not a trivial question how to understand the size, how to understand fully the spaces. So so the first example where we don't know the full answer is when we don't even have is when there is no no we don't even have defects. No defects. We just have this evaluates to one circle. I think evaluates to zero. So in this case, we don't fully know what the state spaces are um, for some number of pluses and some number of minuses. It's not clear. So you no defects, just this arcs and arcs that end in the middle. 
and when you compose you have these relations you can do universal construction um, and uh, so we don't know what the state spaces are there are some semi-modules so we, we don't know what they are this is kind of the, the small simplest case or the smallest case where no, no, not even defects where we don't know the answer so but i think we're just not used to working with semi-modules um and uh, um and it's also, it's also not completely obvious but, but so in this case we don't know the state what the state spaces are Okay, um, maybe we can save other questions for the um, tea break. And again, I invite uh, remote people to join us at the other link that was sent earlier. Um, if you want to grab yourself a cup of coffee and chat with us there. And uh, let's thank um, Paul one more time. Well, thank you. Thank you. And the next talk is um, at 11 o'clock and Peter Phelps, right? Awesome. And, and there's a question of the volume in the room. Uh, I know some of us are speaking quietly, but right now is the volume okay? Oh yeah, yeah, no, it's perfect. Yeah, it's. Okay. So speakers in the room maybe you can come to the front. Sorry, room have questions. Maybe walk to the front. Sit right here. Thanks. Thank you.